Hi, my name is Brad Cunningham, and today we're going to talk about using value converters to format your bound data. So I'm going to start with a simple project here. I've got a person object, first name, last name, and age are defined. And I've got a stack panel on my main window here and three text blocks inside that stack panel, and I'm binding to first name, last name, and age. And in the code behind for main window, I'm just uh, setting the data context equal to a new person, just so we have for an example we have something to bind to. So I've got a person object where I've defined the first name, the last name, and the age and I'm setting that as the data context for our window. That way in my text blocks I can say binding and bind directly to the properties on that data context object, first name, last name, or age. And if I go ahead and run this just so we can take a look at what's there right now, you'll see that you've got a first name, a last name, and an age showing up right in the center of the screen. I've centered the stack panel that it's in, and those are our three text blocks. Now, if we wanted to format any one of those lines of text, so it's more than just the first name. So let's say maybe it says the literal text, first name, colon, and then prints out the bound text. One way we can do that is through a value converter. So on our binding, we would say, we put a comma and we'd say converter equals, and then we need to reference a converter from somewhere. We're going to create this as a resource in a second here, so let's call this first name converter. Okay, and so now we've pointed our bound data to a converter called first name converter, and we're going to need to create this as a resource. So we'll go up here to the Windows resource section. So we'll create a new resources section, and inside here we'll create we're going to call this uh, converters colon first name converter and we'll give it the key first name converter. So the key that we specify here is the same name that we use here in the resource reference. So in the static resource markup extension, we reference the resource by key. So whatever we put here needs to match what we list as the key here. Now we've used a namespace alias here which doesn't exist yet, and we're referencing a converter class that doesn't exist yet, so this isn't going to actually compile. If I run this, we're going to get build errors, and it's going to say converters is an undeclared prefix, basically telling me that I'm trying to reference a namespace alias that doesn't exist. So first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and create that namespace alias. So we'll say xmlns, and we'll create an alias called converters. This is where our converters live. And we're going to put it in the same code that we're already in, so I'm just going to go down in IntelliSense here, and I'm going to say they're going to live in the namespace before reference that happens to be the name of our project. So once I do that now, now I get underlined here and it's saying, well, the converters tag exists, but I don't see any object in there called first name converter. I just see a person and the application object. So what we need to do now is create the actual class to handle our conversion. So I'll go over to our project. I'm going to right click and say add new class. I'm going to create a new class and we're going to um, call this first name converter. Okay, and now we've created a class called first name converter. And we want this class to implement the iValue converter interface. So when we type in iValue converter, it doesn't come up by default. We're not using the namespace we need yet. But you'll notice that there's a little uh, data tip in, in Visual Studio here, this little blue underline. If you press control period, it'll give you the auto completion. For that, and it'll say, do you want to use system.windows.data, which is where the iValue converter interface is defined? You go ahead and say yes, uh, and now you have another data tip. Press control period again, and it says, do you want to implement the interface iValue converter? You say yes. So there's two methods on the iValue converter interface, convert and convert back. The one that we care about here is the convert method. So we'll leave the convert back alone for now. And what the convert method takes in is an object, which is the value that you're that you're passing to the converter and then you have some other options of target type and if you have a converter parameter that's available to be passed in as well. So in our case, we'll flip back to the XAML quickly here. In our case in the XAML, the value that we're passing the converter is this here. It's going to be the value of the binding. So in our binding, we're binding to a property called first name and we're passing it into a converter before we display it on screen. So the first name converter that we're passing this into is going to get the value of the first name property we're binding to. 
So before we implement actually any conversion, let's just do this. Let's say we're just going to return the value as is. So we're not going to do anything to the value. We're just going to return it. But this gives us a chance to do a breakpoint, and I can show you how it's getting called here. So now we've been called, and you can see the value is Joe. So the window is trying to render now, and it's sending the binding through our value converter and giving us the, bind, the bound value that we can do something with. In our case, we're just going to return it as is right now, and you can see everything works the way we expected it, Joe Smith 52. Now let's say that we wanted to append some text to the, uh, or prefix some text in front of this. So what, what we can simply do is say return, and let's say string.format, and we'll say first name colon, and then whatever the value is. All right, so, so now we're modifying the format of the data, and I'll go ahead and breakpoint again here. We'll come in, our value is Joe, and now we're going to prefix it with the literal string first space name and a colon, and then whatever the value is. And now when we run it through, you can see now our value on screen says first name colon Joe and then Smith and 52 are the same and we can reuse these converters as well so it doesn't make as much sense here on the last name since it's going to be that the value is going to be incorrect but we could simply say use the same converter here right and now they're both going to say first name colon and we'll take our breakpoint off here because we already know what it does you can say first name, first name. So you see it doesn't quite make sense on the last name piece, but it shows that we can reuse the converters in multiple places to format our data in a common way. Now, one other way that you can use to format your data, if you're using WPF, um, if you're using .NET 3.5 with Service Pack 1 applied, there was a new feature introduced to handle this specific problem. Uh, for instance, converting the data, if you just want to append some string formatting to it, it's not ideal to have to create converters for that each time. What you'd really like to do is just apply the string formatting directly in the binding itself. So in, in WPF 3.5, this was introduced, and you can say on the binding, you can say string format, and now you can just say first name, and you'll notice that the IntelliSense fights you a little bit here. As you press spacebar, you get some extra commas. You have to go delete. It's kind of it's a little bit annoying. Um, and you'll see there's another one. It just likes to keep adding those commas. So a little bit frustrating, but if you do this instead, you say string format, and we'll go ahead and do this down here, and now we'll make this one make sense. So we'll say string format, last name, colon, and we'll put the string formatter and delete these extra commas that IntelliSense puts in there. It's a bug I wish they would fix sometime soon. Uh, okay, so now we've just added just a string formatter, first name and last name to each, and now when we run it, you'll see first name, last name, and we're able to apply string formatting directly in XAML. So if you're using 3. .NET 3.5 SP1 or later, and you're trying to simply just do some string formatting on the bound values, I'd recommend that you use the string format option that's available to you now, rather than creating a separate value converter just for that. Value converters are, are really useful when you actually are converting the value of the object, not just formatting. So if, if the data types are changing then that's when you would end up using a value converter. Okay, that's all for using the converters or the string format just to do some formatting on your strings.